So, good to um, just carry on with the, the oil, oil playing. Um, I thought I'd just talk a little bit about colour mixing and then uh, also talk a little bit about materials. So, I'm not going to do all the materials, I've got to do a little bit on pallets um, and boards, and that should probably do it. Yep. Um, so, with, with the colour, colour mixing, um, these are the colours I'd sort of suggest to start with. So a couple each of the primary colours, um, I find it is a good place to start. And with that, you can mix an awful lot of colours there. Um, and then also a white, and also I find it's useful having a brown of some sort, like a deep brown. So they're, they're the colours I'd say are a really good place to start, particularly if you're just starting out with oils or starting out with painting. Um, so in relation to the still life that I started, which is over here somewhere, with, with the, um, so the way that this works, I think we've done this quite a few times before, but basically if you've got two each of the primary colours, um, you'll find that, say, perhaps with the yellows, you might have a, a, a yellow that's slightly, got a slightly greeny tinge and a yellow that's got a slightly orangey tinge. And then some of the reds are slightly orangey red and slightly purpley red. Um, so with one that's, Ones that are more to, more orangey, that will give you the brightest orange mix. Um, if you wanted a slightly duller mix of orange, you could use the ones that are, say, the green one and the purple one. So you still get orange, but it wouldn't be quite as bright. So, so that would be, I think, yeah, that that would be the brightest. And I think that's the slightly slightly duller. Um, and the same same applies to purples and greens. Uh, so with purples, this top top line is the, the brightest range of purples, using a purpley red and a purpley blue. And then the dullest would be this one here, which uses the orangey red and the green blue. Um, so when, when you mix these two, so those, you get something more like brown than purple. So if you did want brown, that, that would be the, the way to go. Um, I'll do a little bit more on colour mixing next week as well, uh, where we mix a few different colours together. But if you want, if you've got, say, a colour like a, a red, and it's a little bit too bright, you can soften it with the colour that's opposite on the colour wheel. So that applies to any of these colours. So say you've got a yellow, bright yellow, and you want to dull it down a bit, you could use a little bit of purple. Or if you've got a green that's too bright, you could use one of the reds, and that will just desaturate it, or just soften it out. So that's how you'd use, you know, so with these two we're getting a green, so that's two colour mixing to make a green, and then to soften that green, you could then add a bit of red in for the third three. So I'll do a bit more practice for that as we go along. Um, when I first started teaching, I wasn't really sure what to advise people to get because by that time I'd just come out of art school and I, I'd sort of tried loads and loads of different colours and had all the, all the colours that you, know, you could get. Um, and I come across this book. This book was sort of current at the time when I left college, I think. Um, and, it, and that's where I got this, this idea from, this, this way of talking about colours, which I find quite useful, just sort of seeing the, the primary colours as having a a, a little bit of a secondary colour in them, and it's quite a, it's quite a nice way of describing the colours. Um, so I'll leave that for a minute, and as I say we'll come back to that next week. Um, I've still got all the still life stuff here, so if anybody wants to wants to carry on with still life, the still lives, the stuff there. I also took, I want to go into the materials a little bit. Um, so, as I say, this was just a, a bit of canvas that um, I'm painting on here. I'm not sure of what. So, these, you, this is really the, the kind of canvas that I'm trying to ah, yeah. So, these are usually stretched on, you know, you can buy these in the art shops, all stretched out. So, this is just the same stuff, but stretched around a stretcher. 
Um, and the idea is that these are just jointed, and if it went a bit bit floppy, you can put little wedges in the corners and, and flatten that out. Um, I think when you when you buy canvases, if you wanted to use canvas, they're quite nice because they're nice and lightweight. Um, they're a bit delicate, so you've got to be careful not to dent them. Um, the very cheap ones, I find rip really easily. And also, I'm not so sure that the priming is very good. So I tend to get, you know, something that's reasonable quality. So I, I bought this as a roller canvas, just because it was, um, it's fairly cheap, but it's, it's fairly strong. But it's sort of reasonable, oh yeah, reasonable quality. Um, so if anybody wants a bit of that to try, I've got some a bit here, so you can just cut a bit off there. Um, some of it, unfortunately, got a bit squashed in the car, so it might not be as good as it was, so on Tuesday. But basically, this, you know, if, if this what turns out to be painting, I could just stretch it off to a stretch and just get a stick and um, do that sort of thing. Um, when you're buying canvases, the other thing to look for, is like, like the quality of the, the stretches, some of them are really thin and narrow, so that's one way of doing, seeing if it's a good quality or reasonable quality one or not. Um, the other thing is sort of measure across the corners because quite often I've seen students come in with canvases and they're more like a, they're more like a diamond shape or going towards a diamond shape. So some of them just literally thrown on and they're, they're all sorts of shapes sizes. So, so that, that's what I say with canvases. If, you, if you're going to go for canvas, go for reasonable thinking quality. Um, other, other things to paint on. So actually with, with that, um, yeah, other things you can paint on are of the ready-made boards. You can get canvas boards. So these you can buy in the art shops. This is quite a nice quality one. This one's on MDF board and it's like quite a fine weave. I can't remember how much this was, but it's probably like three to five pound. It's sort of like quite a good one. Um, you can get a lot of cheaper ones. And I've got some for sale here that I just get from the wholesalers. And these are like 90p each. So this would be just like a bit of cardboard with some fabric stretched over and then primed. So if anybody wants one of those, I've got those. Um, what I mostly paint on, I mean, you, you can, the other, other things you can paint on are just MDF from the, the hardware shop. Um, you can get canvas paper. This is supposed to be, or sort of, this is supposed to be all painting paper. So paper that's sort of primed up ready primed for oil painting, so that's another thing you can paint on. Um, yeah, these are the ones that are sort of like cardboards with a, a canvas texture. Yeah, so most of mine are MDF boards. So I, I buy this from the hardware shop or from picture frame suppliers. And get in all different thicknesses. That is six millimeters thick. So that's as thick as all the brief go, otherwise they get very heavy to carry around. Um, and you can get those stairs. This would be from a picture framing type place, and that's only like a couple of millimeters thick, so that's very light. Um, but they do tend to sort of bow a little bit more if they're, if they're thin. But I find that's a good cheap way of finding surfaces or creating surfaces to paint on. And then what I do then is I, I will then prime that with a couple of coats of gesso primer. Mm -hmm. So gesso primer is like a acrylic primer with just a little bit of texture. Um, you can um, make your own sort of canvas boards, just getting a board and sticking a piece of cloth on if you want to do that. Too much of a fun, but... It is a bit of a fat, yeah. Okay. These are, these, this was an idea I came across when I went to Ireland, and just using the, the roll of canvas, and um, just stick it, just sort of sticking it temporarily on a um, piece of foam board. So these are really light. Um, so this is good if you're travelling. So these I did when I was up in Edinburgh in the summer. So because we went up on the train and it's just like what I could fit in a suitcase, this was nice and light to carry. Um, but I know some of the American painters that kind of flown into Ireland when I did the Ireland thing, they were doing this. They just, just bought this foam board and just stuck bits of um, linen canvas or canvas onto, onto these boards. And it does keep it is really light if you're travelling. Um, I know when we went to Italy, um, the um, I had like MDF boards and work pretty heavy really. <laughs> you can only carry probably half the weight of my suitcase was MDF boards so, for painting it. Really. So that, that's quite a good idea if you're travelling. Um, in terms of getting your, your paint, wet paintings home, I think I mentioned this before, but this is probably the easiest way is to have a bit of board and stick 
stick some either, I think this might be skewers or match sticks. Just stick something around the edge like that. Um, and then that, this is how I got these home, was to just kind of do that then. So the wet painting, as long as this isn't too flexible, I did find the foam board was a bit flexible. So I ended up having to make sure that there's paint space. Um, but that is quite a good way of just carrying your paintings home. A bit of tape around here, just so it doesn't wriggle around. And then, um, certainly when, when I've been abroad and, and, and done this, I, I then put it into a plastic bag, so then it can go in the suitcase. Otherwise, if you've got paint around the edges, it'll go all over everything. <laughs> the car or wherever you're traveling, the bus. Um, other people's cars to, to be able to <laughs> So, yeah, that's uh, quite a very easy way of um, travelling with, with paintings. And you could just, just have a few spare boards, you know, just make sure that the, your boards are the same shape and size and stick a few matches around. Um, I've shown you this before, but this is what I do if I'm going. This is a, a box I've made that I. Um, use when I go other ones and things like that. So this means I can take a few boards with me. And it's just a bit easier to get them in and out than the matchstick thing, but even even works well. It is a bit heavier though. So that's another way of um, the And the other thing I want to mention was solvents. I talked a little bit about that. Um, that is the one that I found to be well with, with solvents, I, I have to have the low odor ones because I get split in headaches. Um, and I think it's best in this sort of environment, although we've got a nice airy room, if we keep it low odour. Um, so this one is the cheapest one I've found. I think it's about £12 now for a litre at, in Jackson. So it's not particularly cheap. Um, I just keep recycling this though. And I find that um, what I do is like, when, when you've got your, your jar at the end like that, I just tip that into a big jar and I find that after a few days, the paint will settle and I can then tip, tip the, um, the cleaner, cleanish sort of back out. And it, it comes out a little bit yellow. So that, that's the one that's re recycled. So it's slightly yellow, which I think is probably the linseed oil coming out of the paint. So you're never going to get rid of that. But that is absolutely fine to paint with. So I, I get through probably you know one of these every few months. And it, it literally is just evaporating into the atmosphere. Because I, I never throw it away because expensive and if I can recycle it that's the way to go. If you if you just want to get sort of cheap household solvents that's fine for washing up your brushes at home but it can be a bit uncomfortable in this sort of atmosphere. Um, the other one that I used to use, this is a nice one, um, this might be a bit more environmental but this is more expensive, this is more, this is like over 20 quid a litre. Um, this one's called Zesty and this one is made from citrus oils. So it's quite got quite a nice smell. <laughs> yeah, smells good. This is quite a nice one. Oh yeah, good to see you. Um, but that that's quite a good one. And again, this one you can keep recycling it, and you know it'll, it'll last for a little while. Okay, so that's that. Mm. Enough for today. Well, I'm not planning some trips for them, are you? Would you like a trip? <laughs> Yeah. Um, someone's suggesting we did a, a sketch I, I wouldn't mind doing some trips, but probably wouldn't be on these days. So I'll keep the class days the same. Because um, I've only got three classes at the moment, I can't afford to do sort of cancel one. Um, someone's suggesting going to like the Natural History Museum and doing some drawing and sketching in there. So I thought that might be quite nice, because you can kind of do that any time of the year. So that's what I'll certainly think about for the next couple of months. But yeah, we'll, we'll do it. Dick coming in spring, isn't it? All good? Yep, right, okay.